This is to say hello to Peter Spillman, who has silently watched <laughs> 200 episodes back to back, 10 a day, for, I don't know, ages. And he's finally surfaced and confessed his binge watch. So. Well done, Peter, and I'm sure many of you can relate to that. And I envy you because I'm still trying to binge watch Anna Uncharted. And uh, I can do two, three episodes topped in a row, top in a row. And after that, I just start falling asleep looking at the screen. I mean, it's interesting stuff, but uh, the endurance of some of these binge-watch athletes is impressive. I'm right outside the bogs. But still, I could not be asked to put my T-shirt and shorts on. So I just use the ensuite. And it feels weird, um, you know, just turning on your side in bed and just pouring it in there because, especially when you're a bit half asleep, because you think, is this a dream? Because in my experience, probably especially going back. I don't know, it's before the age of seven. <laughs> when you dream of having a wee, mm, that's, <laughs> that's one dream that comes true. <laughs> and although a man can dream, can't he? You have to make sure you're not dreaming in those situations. And if you actually go around all day when you have a we, you have to ask yourself five times, am I dreaming, am I dreaming? And then you check for details. Details change when you dream. And if the detail remains the same, especially lettering or wallpaper designs or tiles, that kind of thing, then you know it's safe. And if they do change and you're not busting for a we, then you're lucid dreaming. <laughs> Yeah, I had to give that up. Because beside of <laughs> beside checking that you're not in bed wetting, <laughs> you can do other things to train yourself to lucid dream. Either like imagine that you're cutting things up with a lightsaber or that, you know, you can just cast lightning any distance and destroy anything or you can just fly at random moments. Or perhaps some extreme super straight behavior it's a family show I won't go into that but you get the idea so that's how you lucid dream is just to continually fantasize about doing whatever you fantasize about during the day and then it becomes habit and then you end up living that dream in your dream but if you do it for any length of time you'll understand why you'll want to give it up mm. all that is except for checking that toilet <laughs> toilets are real or even leaning over to the side to fill up your bedpan you have to make very sure that that's real when it's happening yeah, that's worth keeping, but the rest of them, yeah, yeah, they can really, really mess up your, your subconscious. <sighs> but back in the world of dreaming, when you don't know you're dreaming, I do have a report, and it's normally the one you have when you wake up. You tend to remember that dream. Well, maybe for 10 seconds, but the trick is to sort of 
day and that awareness of of the memory of the dream and it was that my cheek and nose were pressed into a pillow that stunk of unwashed hair <laughs> and you know where this is going because when I woke up there was my cheek and nose pressed into a pillow that mm, that stunk of unwashed hair yeah living that dream all right ah the glamour of van life <sighs> Shout out to a van lifer I was parked next to yesterday, uh, Lucy, who very nobly teaches textbook reading to dyslexic people. And she gave me this Nepalese incantation. Doesn't show up well in the gold light. Okay, let's throw some white light on it. It says... Nam myo ho renge kyo And you've got to repeat that like a mantra Nam myo ho renge kyo Nam myo ho renge kyo And that's supposed to connect you to the source of abundance and serendipity Okay There's an argument going on in the gents' toilets at Borth, where one man, where one man is accusing another man of loitering and staring at him. And the man being accused is not having any of it. And the row continues. So, someone else is going in with his boy and changed his mind. Well, that's odd. It's the second person I've seen refuse to go in there during this row. Hmm. Listening to an argument with perverts outside a public toilet in a small Welsh coastal village is still more interesting than television. No, the curiosity has got to me. I have to get up and have a look. Well, and it's well over 30 Celsius inside the van on this stinking hot July morning. Hmm. So now a womble comes out, takes a picture just after another man had exited with what looks like a toilet bag. Hmm. Now the androgynous womble has struck up a row with another client, I think a disabled man using the disabled toilets. Hmm. Looks like she's trying it. What? Well, insert pronoun here is trying to um, evict a disabled man from going into the disabled toilet. 
Wow. Where's the androgen? So there's the androgen. And the row continues. Bit of phone waving from the androgen. And you know the disabled bloke is a top geezer because he's wearing socks with sandals. I mean, socks with Crocs. Not a combo I would go for, but I respect it nonetheless. There's no animosity. So what you, he says, what you're saying is disabled people can't use the disabled toilets. Thank you very much. Wow. All right, they're not disabled toilets. Wow. Give them a uniform and they think they're a Nazi.